Hey guys, Cage and I Master here. Welcome to episode 4 of Let's Play Mega Man X2. In the previous episode, we defeated Flamestag, we defeated, um, we defeated Morph Moth, and we defeated the second of the X Hunters, Surges. In this episode, we will fight the last of the Mav the X Hunters, Va Agile, and we will face the last two Mavericks. Magnus Centipede and Crystal Snail. First, we're going to take on Magnus Centipede. Let's go! Magnus Centipede! So, as you can see, as we enter Magnus Centipede's stage, it looks quite familiar. Yes, indeed, this is the same base that the X Hunters we're in when we were first shown them. That didn't sound right. Let me rephrase that. It's the same. This Maverick. The. Blah, blah, blah. Magnus Centipede stage is the same stage. Same base. The X Hunter's base is Magnus Centipede stage. At least that's what we're being shown. Okay, here we see the spotlights right there. We want to avoid those. Because. I tried to avoid those. See, what we were supposed to do, we were supposed to avoid those so we could get the heart tank. Because, like, those, obviously those blocks, those turret blocks will come down if the, if the spotlight hits you. Yeah, that was supposed to act as a... That was supposed to act as a ledge so we can get the heart tank of this stage. But we couldn't get it, so we might keep failing at getting... Here we go. Dang it! Oh my gosh. We almost... Oh gosh, I'm gonna have to kill myself again. I guess I know where I'll be titling this one. Let's fail at getting past the spotlight. Let's fail at getting past the sensors. Dang it! Oh my gosh! This is getting ridiculous. Okay, this is my fifth try. Like, if... See, that sensor is pretty easy to get past. This sensor is pretty easy to get past. This one's relatively easy to get past. And now this is where it gets really hard. Because it's supposed to be really slow moving. Okay, here we go, finally. Let's get the speed burner ready. Yes. Now the next one's gonna probably be a bit harder, because... Wow. That was epic. Okay, now we're not going to worry about getting past the spotlights. Because now it's just going to be a waste of time. Oh, the spotlight found us, but oh, fuck it. We don't... We don't care. 
if we get caught by the spotlights anymore. Now, being crushed by the blocks is something we should worry about. I think you get the sub tank from here, but... Well, oh, maybe we can still get it. And we can! We can still get it. Get the sub tank. Okay, let's move on. Finally, let's move on. And we get this first sub boss here, this... Vector Sword, which you which employs a nice use of mode seven. It's pretty easy, but it's kind of tedious. Yeah, die, Vector Sword! Okay, we kind of need to worry about the, sun the spotlights here, because it could possibly block our way. Now let's stay on the ground here. Oh, god damn it! Okay, come on, come on! Dang it! No, no, no! Oh my gosh! I'm just gonna kill my, let myself get killed here. Because... This was the only way to get to Agile on this stage. But I have no idea how to get to the robot, the mat, the X-Hunter stage, a Crystal Snail stage. So you know what? Fuck it, I'm just gonna let myself get killed here. Because the game won't freaking cooperate. God damn it. Of course, getting killed here is going to be really tedious. Although maybe, just maybe, well, we have to start all overs on the stage anyway, so. I just want to get stuff done on that stage. But no one will cooperate. The game will not cooperate. This game will not cooperate. Let's go back to Magnus Centipede stage for the third freaking time. For the third fucking time. Magnus Centipede. Also, I apologize in advance for the ramp, the possibly rampant swearing in this video if you're offended by, it, by swearing. But if you're offended by swearing too freaking too fucking bad. I'm starting to hate Magnus Centipede's stage even more than Launch Octopus's stage. 
I never thought I would say that, but I do. I'm starting to hate this stage more than Magnus- more than what? I'm starting to hate Magnus Centipede's stage more than Launch Octopus's stage. Because it will not cooperate. Also, I apologize for the for going on another week hiatus other than the uh, Kingdom Hearts 3 Hercules video. Thing is, the weekend before last weekend, I had kind of a busy weekend last weekend because I had to work on a speech for my public speaking class all weekend. And like, really, the weekend's the only time I usually can get these Let's Plays done. Even though today is a weekday, but this is probably the only one I'll get. This is probably the only episode I'll get done during the week. The only Let's Play episode I'll get done during the week. I have this weekend though. My my entire weekend is free though, and I should be done with this Let's Play as well as Let's Play the blog by Thanksgiving, like at least with the filming. No! No, 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 no! Dang it! No, 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 no! Ugh. Like, I get legitimately pissed off whenever that happens. I can't believe I am not. I am starting to hate this stage more than Launch Octopus's stage. I think I found a new way. I'm gonna charge up my speed burner. Made it! And I turned invisible temporarily. Hopefully I can defeat Agile this time. I can defeat Agile. Your destruction is at hand. I think I might have his weakness, though. I should be able to feed him here, though, because I do have, like... I already have, like, three sub-tanks filled up. I'm not even that down in health anyways. So this is going pretty well. Alright, we have defeated Agile, the last of the X-Hunters. I may have failed, but you will never live to see zero. Uh, yes I will, Agile. Yes I will. I got the last of the parts. You got zero part number three. Hooray. Now we can finally move on with this damn stage. There's a sub-tank first. And luckily, I didn't get tracked. So it can't use really. It's pretty much at its weakest it can be. 
This is what enemy is. By the way, what will what will my next let's plays be once I'm finished with Mega Man X2 and the blob? I'll probably do a let's play of Mega Man X3, that I know for sure. Um, will I go beyond X3? Probably I don't know. I might do X4 because I because like aside from X3, X Mega Man X4 is my favorite Mega Man X game. But f 5 is pretty good, I don't like it as much as 3 and 4 as well as the first one. I did not enjoy Mega Man X6. I've never played 7 and 8, although I've heard 7 is the worst. And 8 is pretty good, but not as good as like the Super Nintendo and PS1, the first 5 I guess, collectively. At least from what I've heard. So, now we're going to fight Magnet Centipede, his weakness is the Magnet Mine. Like he's also Magnus Centipede is also pretty easy to defeat. He'll teleport around the stage, so like just watch out for where he teleports. He so yeah, I'll probably do. Actually, I just got to focus on this. On this battle. So as you can see, this is a... When it teleported before I could hit. As you can see, this is a pretty easy boss battle. This isn't the Magnet Mine I'm using, this is Silk Shot that he's weak to. Magnet Mine is Magnet Centipede's weapon that we get. And we've defeated Magnet Centipede and finished this god-awful stage. That I actually hate more than Launch Octopus. <laughs> you got Magnet Mine. So, yeah, I'll probably do a Let's Play of Mega Man X3. I can try to reactivate Zero to help, but I will need more time before you can reinstall his control trip. Try to slow him down. Good luck. Well, I only got one Maverick left, so let's go and fight Crystal Snail. So I'll probably do a Let's Play of X3 and maybe X4. I don't think I'll do X5 and X6, though. Okay, to get the heart tank of the stage... Okay, this is probably the hardest heart tank. Okay, I survived that. Well, it's probably the hardest heart tank to get in the entire game, because you have to go a over... This huge trench here, this huge pit to get to the other side, and I'm not talking about as pit from Kid Icarus. Bad joke, I know. But the huge pit that gotta be really careful. So here we go. Let's try this. And it only took our second try to get there. Usually it's a lot harder for me to get that heart tank. 
it was pretty easy this time. Now this is all this stage also has the last up armor upgrade, the helmet upgrade, which is pretty easy to get. It's not down here, but it's down somewhere. Damn it. That's me being reckless for you. But now we'll have all we have seven We have seven heart tanks. Oh, so let me turn on a light, because it's starting to get dark out. Dark here. Even though at the time of it's recording, it's only five o'clock. Gotta love daylight savings time expiring. I'm tell an interesting story, Will. If you don't know I'm already, I live in Indiana. And for many years, Indiana did not celebrate daylight savings time. I think it was my seventh grade, um, it was my seventh grade year, it was the summer after seventh grade, that Indiana began celebrating light, daylight savings time. At least most of Indiana, like parts of Indiana, like um, Evansville, where my grandparents live. Gosh. Me being reckless again. Daylight's like Evan, like in parts of southern Indiana, particularly Evansville, they still don't celebrate daylight savings time. Uh, that's like that where my grandparents live. But like most of Indiana, like not all of pretty much all of Indiana, did not celebrate daylight savings time for years. Like I think Hawaii, I don't think Hawaii celebrates it either. As far as I know. But I remember there was like this huge controversy about them instituting daylight savings time in the state of Indiana. And I was kind of peeved at first because it felt so weird. Oh, wait, it was my 6th grade year, not my 7th grade year, where we started celebrating Daylight Savings Time, for Indiana Day. Okay, here's an easy way to defeat this boss. Just put the Wheel Gator's weapon, the Spin Wheel. Yeah, the Spin, wi the spin Wheel. That was easy. Wait, I, feel, I remember because it felt so weird. Because in sixth grade, because part of that it would it would start getting dark at around eight o'clock. Eight o'clock was when it would start getting dark. But it felt so weird for me for it to be like really dark. Here's the trench right here to get the helmet upgrade. It felt so weird to me. That it was already light out. Speaking of which, Dr. Light. Mega Man X, enter the capsule. This enhancement will modify your radar optics. It uses some energy, but with it you will be able to see objects that you could not see before. Good luck, Mega Man. And here's the last of the upgrades. So what it will do is think it like it will reveal hidden passageways. Here's that hidden passageway to that extra life, even though I probably won't really need it. The upcoming boss battle against Crystal Snail. So yeah, it felt so weird for me. For it to be like super light out. It's really okay. Here's like here's re what's really cool. You have the silk shot. Put it to its full charging potential, and it will bring about a bunch 
of uh, weapon tanks and health tanks. Like this particular square here, this little chamber here will get you weapon tanks. There's one in Bubble Crab stage that will get you a bunch of health tanks. It makes health, it makes health farming and weapon farming, sub-tank farming and weapon farming so much more easier than in the first Mega Man X. Where you had to do like it all manually on the Spark Mandrill stage. Yeah, but it felt so weird on Daylight Savings Time for years for it to be so light out, still be really light out at 8 o'clock in the evening, and it didn't really get dark out until like, it wasn't really like pitch dark until 10 o'clock, until like after 10 o'clock, like it was still, there was still light out, like right at 10 o'clock, it was like, it was strange. And that's why so many were opposed to bringing in daylight savings time, because like there are a lot of kids out there. Like, hey, let's get the magnet mine ready. I should have had that ready already. Ready. But so many parents were opposed because there were kids that have to go to bed. Like when it was still light out. Like, when I was, um, until I was, like, uh, nine years old, my bedtime was 8.30. Like, it was, like, 8.30, it was, my bedtime was 8 o'clock when I was in second grade. Eight, like, every year, my parents would increase my bedtime by 30 minutes. So, like, up until third grade, my... Like, up until second grade, my bedtime was 8 o'clock. Then they increased it to 8.30 when I was in third grade. Then 9 o'clock when I was in fourth grade. 9.30 when I was in fifth grade. And then throughout middle school and most of high school, my bedtime was 10 o'clock. Yeah, I still had a bedtime in high school. Then senior year, they made it, t my bedtime was 10.30. And I don't even, and obviously now that I'm in college, I don't have a bedtime. But I usually go to bed. At around midnight, and we have defeated Crystal Snail. I barely talked about that boss battle. So we have defeated the last of the Mavericks of this game. You got Crystal Hunter. Mega Man X, I've located the X Hunter base. It's at grid location 00, that's at, right at the North Pole. Oh no, they're gonna murder Santa Claus! Roger, Dr. Kane, I'm on my way. It will take more, some more time to reactivate Zero. Slow them down, Mega Man X. But before. But before we go. Before we go ahead and fight off the... Go to the X-Hunters base... Like, the X-Hunters aren't actually dead, as I've implied before. They are actually just retreating. Oh crap, like... Oh, but oh well, like, that's a respawning it. That enemy was, Yeah, as you can see, he respawns. So let's get the last of the... Heart Tanks. Alright, we are done. With all the heart tanks, we got all the heart tanks, we got all the weapons, we got all the armor pieces, we got all the sub tanks, and now all we have to do is fight off go to the X Hunter's base. So, anyways, I hope you enjoyed this episode. This is Cage Jedi Master signing off. Next time, we're fighting the X Hunters at the North Pole, and we're going to save Santa Claus. This is Cage Jedi Master signing off.